Hi, Deb. Hi, Jen. Hi, yeah. Thank you for joining us um, today. Nice um, to see you. Just to introduce kind of what, what we're doing here, um, as part of our Four Pillars of Health campaign, we've been focusing on one pillar each week, and this is the week we're going to be talking about, well, we're talking about Flourish, and yep. that's kind of part of what you do. And Flourish is a bit of an interesting word, but we kind of like think that it, it you know, it's, it's all about being happy, happy and healthy, and I think mental health really plays into that, your kind of your state of happiness, which is why I really wanted to talk to you today, because um, you are the psychotherapist and hypnotherapist. Mm -hmm. you're based in Beaconsfield and you've been with Seed for a while now and you're a fantastic addition to the team and you're kind of our go-to when we're talking a lot about stress and anxiety but there's so much about um, about what, what what you do so do you want to kind of introduce yourself first and give us a bit of a bit of your background sure yeah um, well uh, as you say I'm part of the Seed wellness group but also I run my own private practice here in Beaconsfield um, right in the center of Beaconsfield um, and I've been doing that particular thing since I moved here about four years ago um, and um, obviously coming into the area new it was starting up the business from from scratch here um, but it's gone from strength to strength I'm delighted to see how open people are to understanding that this is a, an important part of their well-being yeah. um, and people are regarding uh, coming for therapy in some way um, with the same level of importance as any other wellness activity like you wanting to be as mentally well as they are physically well looking after their mental health as well as physical so um yeah so the business is um uh it's it's just me um it's my practice um and um i have complete range of ages and um backgrounds and whoever wants to come and see me um it's very very varied in terms of the clients so tell us a little bit about so you're a psychotherapist and a, a clinical hypnotherapist yes and just quickly because i know we've, we've been discussing previously that you could go on and on about you know there's so much you could delve into for each of those but just quickly yeah. it's kind of a top line introduction what 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 are both of those what's a psychotherapist and what's a hypnotherapist if you like take psychotherapy and a psychotherapist as an umbrella field as an umbrella term so in the same way as so we all know what a physiotherapist is um it's someone who gives the therapeutic um a, application of whether it's exercises, um, rebalancing, uh, re-strengthening. If you think of all the things that you do when you see a physiotherapist yeah. for your physical well-being, a psychotherapist is there to provide therapeutic support to your mental well-being. Um, psychotherapy is a very unregulated term. So, um, and there are hundreds, in fact, I think as of the start of the 21st century, thousands, it actually came into a thousand different approaches therapeutic approaches that come under the umbrella of psychotherapy it basically means talking about it working your way into feelings and emotions working from that side of things and hypnotherapy is one aspect of it if you like right. so hypnotherapy is a very specialized area um, it is possible to train in a in a few hours over a, an online course but i really wouldn't recommend it um, it, but it is that's focusing very much on being able to go into those much deeper, more deeper level of subconscious to really get it. If you want to get at why and get at root causes rather than just things that might help you cope when you really need to go deeper, hypnotherapy is just the most brilliant approach. Right. And um, so is that something, so you use both together or is, is like you said, hypnotherapy is part of psychotherapy. So yes, if someone yeah. comes to see you, there's not a strict kind of, we're going to do hypnotherapy. It's, it's just kind of whatever works to help them get to the, Kind of yeah stuff. it's whatever works for them and in a way that's why the the initial consultation is so important and i spend 90 minutes with somebody in that first session right. so that we can really talk through i need to understand so much about their background their social history their emotional and psychological history if you like so that we can work out what approach are we going to use and it's very, it's very organic very fluid um, i never deliberately think okay i'm going to use a, a little bit of this followed by a little bit of that and finish with a little bit of the other yeah. it's every single person will actually end up with a slightly different mixture of of what we use there may be some people coming saying i'm coming because i want you to hypnotize me for this and they have a very specific idea it may be that by the time we've got through that first 90 minutes or even part of it they've completely changed their mind and they want to try something that's rather very different right the chances are i will use some hypnotherapy with almost everybody even the ones who might come in saying i don't do any of that on me will you and none of it none of it i would i would never do anything 
I don't do something to someone. So it's always by what they are comfortable with. Right. But I would say it's a mixture of all kinds of different approaches for almost why, everybody. And why do you think, well, what, why are people coming to see you? I mean, what's the majority of the reasons what would a client ring up and say, I want to come because of this, this or this? Is there, is there a common theme? Is it a mixture of things? Why, did, why do people generally come and, come and ask for your help? You know, probably almost everybody who comes will be using the word stress or anxiety at some point. Because if they come saying, um, uh, there's something about uh, my food habits, or there's something about my relationship, or there's something about um, a particular situation that I find uh, triggers me, or I, I behave irrationally, or it, it'll, it'll come down to something that is making them anxious or stressed underneath, almost inevitably. Mm-hmm. Um, so if, if there's one common theme, it's, it is stress and anxiety. Um, Even if someone says I've come because um, it's a very specific phobia, like I'm afraid of spiders, it's still triggering that anxiety response when they see a spider. Yeah. So if you're looking for one common theme, uh, that's that's got to be it. And have you noticed, obviously, this has been a a very strange year, very stressful year and anxiety levels for people, you know, have been skyrocketing. Have you noticed that in clinics? You've obviously been very busy through lockdown. Some of our members, unfortunately, you know, hands-on uh, body therapists, practitioners haven't been able yeah. to work, but you've been busy online. So have you I, I have. It will. And in fact, the online bit took me aback dramatically because prior to this, I'd always said, no, 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 it's got to be face-to-face. This is the kind of work you can't just do over a screen. Yeah. Why was I wrong? Um, you know, I was forced into the situation of, of doing online consultations and it's been just as effective. Yeah. And I've, I've been glad I've been able to keep going to give that support to people right through. And yes, it has changed. I mean, funnily enough, whilst it, it, it's gone in both directions, because whilst there have been a lot of people who, if you like, were coping with whatever it was they were coping with before the COVID and lockdown and everything else happened to us, um, who then were almost tipped by that. It was just one thing too many. It was like, now in this new situation, now that I'm on furlough, now that my kids are at home, now that I can't go out, now that I can't see my ailing parents whatever it might be it became a tipping point that one level of stress too many where people said now it's not just that one extra thing that I want to see you about but actually I've realized that all these things underneath or this one thing that I've been trying to control I can't just hide it anymore I can't I, I need to get it sorted I need to process it so some people for whom it's been a much bigger deal But funnily enough, there's also been the opposite side. So I have seen, I had some clients before this who said, actually, um, maybe I'm all right for the moment. I think I can manage without you because I've got a whole new perspective of what's going on in my life or I've got other things to focus on or other distractions. And actually that thing that was so difficult before has somehow got put in perspective. There was another side to it where, you know, you might have people where, a lot of the stress came from the specific work situation or the traveling or the, the school. A lot of, you know, for a lot of kids at school, it's less stressful being away from whatever was, was causing that in the first place. Yeah. So for some people, lockdown and, and being at home has, has meant they've got away from stressful factors. And it's been a time to just slow down and open out a bit relax more and I guess like anything you know we're all different all human we're all different as human beings and we cope with things differently and we see things differently and our perspectives are differently and I guess this is is the same thing and just quickly talk us through how it works if someone comes again we're all different but yeah just how how often will somebody need to come to see you how long will they need to see you I guess how long is a piece of string in a way isn't it that's like saying if if I were to go and see a doctor because there was something wrong with me would I only need one visit no and 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 it's like no there might be some things where it's really short it's easy to establish you know what what it is that's the the issue and and a fairly obvious direct route and it's okay this isn't going to take long um with other things it can be actually this has become much more complex because there's a lot going on underneath um and it may take a bit of time to actually get into it's it's exploration you you're going into something it's like saying we're, we're going to walk into this forest and the may we may find a straight path through to the other side but it may end up a bit like a bit of a maze and we may be going all over the place before we quite get everything sorted yeah. um 
so it is it's impossible to to guess or, or, or make a judgment on um but um it, it is it's a it's a guided exploration i think is, is the best way um, yeah it's a great way of putting it and then we were talking uh, you were saying earlier about you know children at school and it, what's your typical client base do you have a real mix because on some of our insta lives before we've really noticed that the uptake of men coming into kind of the whole wellness spectrum when we first started seed a few years ago we were really pushing for kind of men's health and men's yoga classes and and, and even with our mental health side of seed, like your counseling, psychotherapy, it was, a, it was a harder push. People weren't as keen. Like you say now, people are really keen to, to kind of yeah. look after their mental health. And have you seen an, up, an uptake kind of in, in men coming to see you as well? Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, right, right from the off here, I was, I was, if you like, impressed by the fact that, um, you know, there were male clients right from the start. But I would have said, um, you know, if I compared, say, four years ago to at the moment um it's gone up from probably say about a third to almost equally half sometimes i'm just over 50 percent men sometimes just under but it really is pretty evenly split now which i think i think it's a great reflection on the fact that um you know there was a time where it's like this big it's okay to be okay even if you're a man you know you can do this and now i think it's just completely natural for men to want to why wouldn't they want to be a better version of themselves a better you know, be it's, and this is what we talk about at seed the whole time it's about wellness is, is it should be accessible to everyone and wellness is not just one thing and you know many of us are guilty of kind of we might spend hours at the gym or running on the treadmill but if we're not mm. looking after as we say those four pillars of our mental health which yeah. are to move to relax to eat and flourish which is our mental health then we're never going to be optimally well so it's it's great that you kind of that you see firstly that all, all types you know genders and children as well coming to see you so yeah. everyone's kind of seen the benefit of looking after their mental health which is great yeah, yeah. and and when you talk about optimal you use that word optimal and it's not just about oh i've got this problem state i've got this thing that's wrong with me it's also i want to be at my peak performance i want to be my best in this meeting or at my golf game or um just in that situation i know that there are certain things that are annoying me or that upset me or get in the way or I get angry or I, I I lose my focus and I want to do it better how do I how do I get if you look at professional sportsmen how many of them have some sort of psychotherapy mm -hmm. um, to help them really perform at their absolute peak so it, it, it can be it's it's becoming the the best version yeah. of of yourself in whatever way that that is for you yeah and you use I guess, I mean, some of the videos you've shared with us before on Seed, I mean, like different kind of coping techniques. I guess it's, mm -hmm. like you said, it can be a, a deep, ex, deep, deep dive, I guess, an exploration. Yeah. Or it can be just like you said, these small little tiny coping techniques. I guess it depends. And Absolutely. People mix and match and use whatever they need in that situation. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of people who, you know, need coping mechanisms to, because if what they're dealing with is, you know, I have this meeting next week or I have to get on that plane. Um, and there's something where it's like, OK, there's no point saying, well, let's have a bit of a delve around and find out immediately, you know, what is what is going on that's caused that to be an issue in the first place. They need something that is going to help them in that moment. Yeah. But I don't want it to stay there because if it's just there, then if you like it, we've stuck, put a sticking plaster on it and that's all it's going to be. Um, you, ideally, you then want to be able to spend a bit of time saying, how do we find out why this is even an issue, why it's here in the first place? Yeah. And that's when you really make the, make the change, make the difference, and it lasts because you've, you've got into the root cause. Yeah, um, well, it's, yeah that's amazing. Th thank you for joining me. I'm conscious I know you've, you're busy as well. You've got a very busy week, haven't you? If you're yeah. grandfather on the way, you've got lots to be <laughs> organising and doing. So I, I won't keep you for too much longer. I just wanted to ask if people do want to get in touch with you, how yeah. can they do that? Well, obviously, there's the Seed Wellness site um, because I'm, my details are listed on there and there is my Seed email, um, but it'll also link there to my website and, and my email address uh, and my phone number. They can also Google Croft Therapy, which is the name of my business in Beaconsfield. Find me that way. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, hopefully I'm reasonably accessible. You definitely are. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much, Deb, for joining us. That's been really fascinating. Um, Thanks, Jen. I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Yeah.